there is nobody who will look at a knife and be more critical of it than the person whose name is on it. There's no employee, I don't care how much you pay them, nobody will ever look as hard at quality as the people whose names are on the knife. And we are not so far removed from the business that we're not a real big part of that. And I think that translates into value on the knife. We wanna make a knife that lasts you for your life and for that of someone you leave the knife to. We're trying to make an heirloom quality tool. When I walk around the factory and I see some of my grandfather's and my dad's tools floating around in guys' hands, I have a very bittersweet moment as I think about my, my grandfather and my, my dad holding those tools. And we, I'd love it, and I know they would love them being here working still under my umbrella. They would love that. And uh, I want your knife that you buy from us, from me, that I designed, that I held in my hands. I want it to go through your hands to someone you love when you're done with it. And uh, know that that quality goes with it that whole time. It's not a temporary thing. As temporary as we all are, the knives are not temporary. They'll be here a long time. One of the, I think one of the biggest challenges new people have with knives, new to the high-end American-made knife scene, is the money. They're expensive. They cost a lot of money. And the reason so much of the cutlery industry's been kind of routed by modern ways of doing business is because it is a labor-intensive product. And you have to connect the hidden costs with the intrinsic costs when you start looking at the value of a knife. And then for many people, their knife is an extension of them. It's an extension of their personality or it's an extension of their personal style or kind of ethos, their view on the world. And all of that personality and individuality and uniqueness and quality um, starts to add up to the cost versus value. So when people are used to the regular world and they get into the knife thing a little bit and they call me up, and I had this happen yesterday. I had an engineer from Honeywell out of Sacramento call up because he bought his first Medford. And everyone was busy and I was walking by and I picked up the phone and the guy was beside himself. And he had a scratch on the knife that he had put on it. I kind of explained to him why it wasn't gonna be real easy to get rid of the scratch. And he was beside himself and ready to buy another knife because he's able to call up and reach me on the phone. He, I mean, he told me that, and I've heard that hundreds of times. He goes, you know, he goes, I was already sold on your company, but the fact that I called up and got you on the phone, I, I'm gonna go buy another one. I would love it, you know, awesome, congratulations. And you just made me feel better that you answered the phone. I can't believe you. And I, all I had was in the, with, was bad news for him. I had no good news. So the cost versus value is a, a little elusive from the outside. It's a little elusive from far away. You give someone a tour through the factory and let them see how knives are built. I can't tell you when the last time I gave a tour was and they didn't buy a knife. I, I don't care if they buy a knife. Yes or no, cool, I don't care. But I have people come through all the time I mean, I, I gave a tour to somebody a couple days ago. I gave them a tour. Their, their uh, son lives on the East Coast and they wanted to pick up a knife for him. Not a knife person. So they asked me some questions and I gave them a tour. And when we finished up the tour, they said, you know, I'm getting a knife for him, but I want to get one for me now. And I was like, to me inside, I was, it was like I was at the touchdown with a football and I was spiking it. I was like, <laughs> I just won the Super Bowl. I got a non-knife person who didn't get it, who didn't know our models, who had never seen anything. They spent $600 on a pocket knife. That tells me this is real. Because there was no sales pitch. I'm like, hey, here's what we do. Here's where our mail comes through. They connected the dots and they were blown away. 
So how do I reach out to the rest of America and let them connect the dots for me and everybody else who makes really cool American-made stuff? If you haven't done that sort of uh, lifestyle purchase, you might not get it yet. But you get it at some point in your life where you, you buy a lifestyle thing and all of a sudden you go, I get it. That's what it's about.